Wabash, the gentleman's rule. You gotta believe in that stuff. The Wabash always fight. Hello and welcome to another edition of the Don Morrell Show, your chance to hear the thoughts and comments of the head football coach of the Wabash College program. Coach, a really big win on Saturday, 28-7 victory over Denison, and we, we've talked about it all week long. What a great effort by the defense, 49 yards of total offense, that's all they allowed in the second half of that ball game, one first down. And really, it was less than 49 yards because Denison got 21 of those in kind of mop-up roll with their backup quarterback in late in the ball game on, on their final drive. What a tremendous effort by the defense on Saturday. Really was. Got to hand it. Uh, I think Jeff Ramsey, our coordinator, does a great job. David Denham, uh, Jeff Franklin, Steve Shipman, C.J. Ramsey did a super job in getting our team prepared. But then it really was the kids in the second half that just kind of put their foot down and uh, uh, made the decision to stop everything Denison was doing. Well, and it really, you, you got kind of an idea of what type of game your defense might play on that first series. Denison takes the uh, opening drive, they start to march down the field, and then a huge hit by Satchel Burton that we're going to see in the replay, or in the uh, highlights here in just a few minutes. Uh, forced to fumble, Evan Hansen fell on it, uh, came up with the first of two turnovers in the ball game, and it just ended up really setting the tone for the game, I felt. It, it did, and uh, we were thrilled. You know, Satchel's a kid who's missed a bunch of games. Uh, that was his first big trip back. Comes in with, a, you know, a strip and a tackle, and then later does it again in the game. It, you ended up scoring off of that turnover, took a 7 nothing lead. Dennison tied the game. Uh, that's where it sat at halftime. But then, in addition to the defense's outstanding effort in uh, the second half, your offense really got moving. Uh, you used the ball control. Dennison actually led in time of possession at halftime and led in the yardage totals. But really, it was just all Wabash in the second half. Your offense took over. Obviously, we're going to talk about Ike James and his performance in the game. But the running game overall, you're not a lot of passes thrown. But they were good passes thrown by Weston Murphy that helped keep drives alive. And really, it just looked like you were able to execute exactly what you wanted to try and do against Dennis. Uh, we really felt like Weston played his best game of the year. It may not look like it statistically, but he checked us into the right run play several times, uh, was effective uh, throwing the ball. We dropped a couple, um, but no, did a super job. And uh, uh, that's what we want to look like uh, for four quarters. That's the new challenge. We did it for half. Can we do it for a full game? Before we again take a look at the highlights and we start to talk about some of the numbers on offense and defense, I want to talk about hidden numbers for just a moment. What a great job Skyler Narig and Alex Marr did in special teams. It was a windy day and there were a couple of drives that you were able to take advantage of because of poor punts by Dennison. But Skyler just, even into the wind, kept drilling the ball deep on kickoffs. Yep. And Alex Marr just kept drilling punts, uh, a couple of 50-yard punts, and never gave them good field position. Uh, and you mix in with that some penalties Dennison committed uh, that also added to that field position. But your special teams play was spectacular on we're, Saturday. Uh, we're lucky. Those are two super sophomores for us. They have been around. They started last year for most of the season, too. Uh, they're talented, and then I, I think we're just we're getting better and better in special teams. The ten other guys we put out on the field really want to uh, uh, be excellent at the job they have. You were good in the return game as well, both the kickoff return and sure-handed in the punt return. Uh, we mentioned the two turnovers for Denison, no turnovers for Wabash on Saturday, and that played a huge key in the game. Really did. Uh, the other thing I'd point out too. Uh, uh, Penalty-wise, we only had two penalties Saturday. It was the same the week before, and uh, that's a great stretch for us, and we need to play penalty-free to be a good football team. Well, it's really been a key all season long. You were ranked second in the conference, 20th in the nation in fewest penalties committed per game, averaging about 4.4 penalties a ball game. See, I didn't even know that. Uh, see, those, those <laughs> are those magic numbers I keep handy in my uh, stats. But, good. Uh, you've been able to not only limit the penalties, but limit the yardage on them. I think on Saturday there were two penalties, I think a five-yarder and a 10-yard yep. holding penalty, yep. and, and that's really all you had Saturday, and that helped 
keep good field position as well. It really did. There was one critical point, too, where uh, we fair caught a ball and their player interfered with the fair catch. It was 15 yards. And uh, Denison is a good football team. Uh, uh, but instead of getting the ball at the 50, we got it at the 35, and we do well in the short field. So again, part of that field posi uh, a position game that, that Wabash clearly won on Saturday. Let's talk about Ike James for a moment. North Coast Athletic Conference Offensive Player of the Week for the second time this season. 22 carries, 158 yards, three touchdowns. And one of those touchdowns was spectacular, but he also had a great 67-yard run that set up your fourth touchdown by Weston Murphy. There we see, uh, I believe, his one-yard touchdown or two-yard touchdown run. But he had a 29-yard uh, scamper. You had Denison playing nine and eight in the box all day long, ran into a, a solid defensive wall that Denison had, and then just bounced off of it. And he had Weston Murphy out to his left blocking and just found a wide open alley into the end zone. Well, again, I, we're learning more and more that Ike is a really good football player. Uh, and then he's surrounded by a great group of football players, too. And uh, he's doing a super job for us. There you see him cutting outside on a, on a short four-yard touchdown run. Again, he had three touchdowns on the afternoon. But your running game as a whole was solid. Again, Isaac Avant, 14 carries for 42 yards. Tyler Downing, four carries for 19 yards. But the carry he didn't have may have been uh, as important as any he did because he and Weston Murphy ran a tremendous ball fake that led to Weston's touchdown run. Yep, uh, and again, uh, we feel like whether it's uh, Downing or Bloom or whoever, uh, all those guys can do it for us. There we see the 29-yard uh, touchdown run by Ike James as he broke free with Weston Murphy on the carry. Uh, Weston was 6 of 13 in the ball game for 61 yards. Like we said, statistically, didn't look fantastic, but he just didn't make any mistakes Saturday. Really found open receivers and, and plays that kept drives moving. He, uh, it's true, and then on the flip side, uh, I think obviously the Denison quarterback's a phenomenal player, uh, but in the end, he did make the mistakes we needed. He ends up throwing an interception that was created by a Satchel Purton uh, breakup. Evan Hansen with a great job diving in to grab that interception. We'll see it here in just a couple of minutes. Uh, your defense, continues to to just be a team there you know you've said it a couple of times there's not one big individual star they're just guys as we see Evan get a sack there uh, the only sack of the ball game on Kane and Gabley uh, they just continue to play as a solid unit and it's the 11 guys on the field and that rotation because there are a lot of guys coming in and seeing time as well as the game goes on really is I, I don't think we have an all-american on our defense but it doesn't matter to them they just continue to grow and and play well together second time in Kane and Gabley's career that Wabash has held him under 150 yards passing it's only been it's only happened three times Wittenberg did it once uh, again uh, Gabley on the afternoon was 12 of 20 with one interception for 103 yards no touchdown passes and that's another thing that rarely happens when Kane and Gabley's on the field you just never really let him get the ball down into scoring position other than the one drive in the second period. I also think in the second half he was frustrated because they couldn't get anything going and we started to control the ball more and more. The ball control was, was certainly a key in that ball game because, uh, again, it kept, you, you, you've talked about it, with no turnovers, maintaining possession of the ball, keeping the other team's offense off the field, and really controlling the overall tempo of the game, that's got to be critical for this football team. It is, and I think our team can feel that too. When we start to hold on to it more and the defense is rested on the sideline, they, they kind of know how we're built. There's Weston Murphy going into the end zone for his touchdown. Uh, again, that great play fake to Tyler Downing uh, with the Denison Big Red all crashing the middle to go in on Downing. Weston went in untouched into the end zone, just a tremendous fake. And you talked Saturday about that after the game, that that's something Weston's really worked on running that play fake and, and that option play. Yeah, he has, and it's not his cup of tea, but he's uh, improving at it, and it just gives us another dimension once we get inside the red zone. Dennison had one final drive with Gabley on the field. You see it right here, Satchel Burton with a great tip, and Evan Hansen steps in, picks off the pass, and that was pretty much the end of uh, Gabley's day. And Again, Wabash seals away the 28-7 victory. Little Giants now 5-0 on the season, 4-0 in the North Coast Athletic Conference. How have you seen this team progress throughout the first half of the season? 
um, you know, in chunks, and at times we've regressed in chunks. So uh, I'm excited to see what we have this Saturday. Uh, I do think we're not going to repeat some mistakes we have been making and uh, just continue to grow and develop as a football team. Wabash begins the second half of the season this Saturday. They get ready to take on Ohio Westland, another home game for Wabash. It'll be a little different atmosphere here Saturday. It's fall break. I've already talked to a lot of students, I'm sure you have as well, that are excited to get home for a yep. few days. Sure. But that means they won't be here for the ball game. And you talked to your team about that yesterday, that, that they may have to generate some of that emotion and, and some of that excitement that they get from the fans when they're here for a home game. Uh, I believe so, you know, and we know we're going to dress 140 guys, and if you're not on the field, you need to be cheering as loud as you can. And we, we just need, from, from start to finish, we need to put a complete football game together. You know, last week we did it for a half. Uh, we're we're going to see if we can do it for a whole game this week. This is an Ohio Wesleyan team that comes into Hollett Little Giant Stadium with a 2-3 and three record, but they're one point away from maybe being a one-loss team or, or even possibly a no-loss team. A 31-30 loss to DePaul. They rallied last Saturday uh, with an 11-play, 85-yard drive to end up defeating Kenyon. Uh, they're a football team that has a solid offense, and it starts really with a uh, freshman running back who's been exciting for them this year, along with a senior quarterback. Uh, what have you seen from Ohio Wesleyan preparing for them this week? Well, I just I think they're fearless on uh, offense. They're going to do whatever it takes, and to me, they're kind of built to score 32, 34, 35 points a game any way they can. So they, they, they may turn it over three times, but they're going to score 35 points. So. We can't get caught up in, in, in that game, but they are aggressive on offense. And then defensively, uh, you, you talked earlier this week about them really trying to force a lot of turnovers and, and you know, gambling even in some, in some cases to try and create those turnovers to try and end possessions and get the ball back on offense. I think what they do on offense and defense marries itself pretty well where they're, they're taking chances, they may turn it over, but on the flip side, defensively, they plan on getting turnovers uh, with all the stuff they do. One of the things Wabash has presented teams that, that, that it has faced this year is a, is a big, solid offensive line. That's something the defense is going to see this week. These are some, there, there are some big guys on the offensive line for Ohio Wesley, a couple of 300 pounders and one guy who's a biscuit away from 300. Yep. So they, they, they bring some big size in. They, they do. And I know defensively they've worked on it this week and, uh, we've, we've had a real challenge, uh, to simulate what they do, but again, I have tremendous faith in our defensive staff. Kickoff in the Ohio Wesleyan game is one o'clock here at Byron P. Hollett Little Giant Stadium. You heard fall break, the students will not be here in mass as they normally are, so we'd invite you to come out and join us. We'll give you ticket information on that in just a minute, but I know you and your little giants will be here. No fall break uh, for the team other than they get a chance for a little late morning practice tomorrow. Uh, then you'll give the guys Friday off uh, before they come back Saturday to get ready to play. Yep. Uh, is that something the football players even worry about, the, the fall break? I mean, they, they already committed to the fact that they were going to be here through November and hopefully beyond into December. Uh, does that affect them at all, or do they just enjoy the fact we've got one day we, or two days, we don't have to worry about classes? We're a football player for two days. I think one, one uh, tonight we try to have some fun in the dining hall because we'll be the only people in it. Uh, they look forward tomorrow to getting to sleep in a little bit. And Friday they know they get to sleep in. Uh, but then it's back to business. And they're used to having, we take Friday off here every week. They're used to that. And uh, then getting into our game day routine, they'll be ready. We will be ready as well. One o'clock kickoff again with Ohio Wesleyan. You can pick up tickets for that game online at www.ticketor, that's T-I-C-K-E-T-O-R.com slash Wabash. Pick up your tickets before the day of the game, uh, $7 for adults, and all the ticket prices are online. You can also buy your Monon Bell tickets uh, for that game coming up on November 11th down in Greencastle. You can pick those up uh, while they're selling rapidly, and we'll have the game for you right here on Wabash TV. Uh, beginning at about 12.40 with this very show, the Don Morrell Show, and then Jim Amadon and Steve Hoffman will have all the action live on the Wabash College website, and we'll also have the audio on 91.3 FM WNDY Crawfordsville. Coach, thanks for joining us again today. Good luck Saturday. Thank you.
You've been watching the Don Morrell Show, your chance to hear the thoughts and comments of the head football coach of the Little Giant program. We'll talk to you next week. Wabash, the gentleman's rule. You gotta believe in that stuff. Wabash always fight.